All right, thank you. Um, just want to thank the Lord just for another opportunity for us to get together here at Wisdom's Table. Uh, we are uh, starting a new series tonight, which I'll get into more detail, obviously, in just a moment. But first, we want to open up in prayer. Father, we just uh, thank you for getting us through this week. We just lift up all the people in our country and in our world, um, but in our country, Lord, that are mourning, that are mourning uh, just much, some more, you know, tragic, tragic deaths and loss of life and, and um, serious injury, Father, from shootings in this country. This, this uh, as tough as it is, as, as hard as, as it is to see these things in the news and to, you know, just try to process it, it just uh, should solemnly uh, renew our hope because your word lets us know these kinds of things are going to happen the closer the time comes that you you come um, your second for your second coming and so you know as tough it, as it is as sad as as it is we just still worship you we praise you Father that you are true you are the Lord and um, your word is um, true and solid and we can count on it. And we rejoice uh, because of our salvation through you. We ask you to bless our time tonight, Father. Help me to disseminate the, uh, the, the lesson in a way that's clear, succinct, and most of all, and most importantly of all, accurate. Um, and Lord, if this uh, topic tonight of domestic violence and abuse ever, you know, if it, if it touches um, anyone personally, whether it's during this, during our live Zoom meeting or with anybody that may watch the recording later, Father, we just ask you to um, just minister to that person, to that, to that woman and um, bless her, give her hope, give her direction, give her practical ways to deal with it. And uh, may, may I uh, be able to provide information that um, helps women do that. So we, we dedicate this time to you um, and uh, we ask you to bless all of the households, marriages, future marriages that are represented here this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So um, I have a lot to cover. This topic will probably last at least two weeks, if not longer. I don't want to rush it, um, but I don't want to belabor it too much either. Um, and that's, that's the case with any, with any topic, but this is important, uh, domestic violence and abuse um, in the context of marriage. Um, but I do have some quick announcements first. So um, for those of you who don't know, don't remember, um, let me let Corinne in just a moment. Okay. Uh, this the, how it works here, calls every, every Wednesday at Wisdom's Table is the first hour is our, our interactive um, study. Uh, it is recorded and, um, and the recordings are posted in the Wisdom's Table Facebook group, the private Facebook group. Um, it's also on uh, Instagram and our uh, Wisdom's Table YouTube channel. So, um, so I encourage you to follow on Instagram and, and YouTube as the Lord leads you and, and please subscribe. And then the second hour is optional, uh, but I hear I am here for a second hour to that's not recorded, and it's um, the purpose of that is to have open discussion, open Q and A. Um, that is not recorded to uh, respect uh, privacy. If any, if any lady, if any sister has a question, uh, a personal question that she needs answered, Wisdom's Table is intended to be a safe place. Um, it's it's there's no un no unrighteous judgment. Um, our goal in coming together and learning is for each of us, including the teacher here, but each of you to turn our eyeballs inward, to hear the lessons and, and, so, and do some self-reflection, not reflection about, you know what, you know, Sister Susie over there, yeah, she's not doing this right or, you know, no, it's, it's for us to look at ourselves uh, for the purpose again for, personal growth and change um, within ourselves. Um, and then of course, Christ is first and preeminent in everything that, that we're trying to do at Wisdom's Table. Uh, two more quick things, uh, announcements. Um, please be in prayer for both of these things. So uh, Wisdom's Table podcast, um, I'm looking at launching that on May 1st, uh, Sunday, May 1st, Lord willing. 
Uh, please, I need prayers. Uh, if you want to be a guest, and financial support is always uh, welcome, and, um, and, and administrative support. Um, so contact me if you would like to be a part of the Wisdom's Table podcast. I'll give you more information, but um, just announcing it here so you can keep an eye out. And, and most of all, please pray for that. Pray, want, really want the Lord's will to be done with that. Um, and then, the, then also pre, please pray for my book. I'm inching, Laverta, I'm inching, Cherry, I'm inching <laughs> towards like, getting that done. Um, but uh, the working title right now is How to Hurt a Happy Marriage, 52 What Not to Do is for Christian Wives. Um, so it's based on the series of posts that I uh, did in our Facebook group last year, this time last year. Um, and, and just one request is I need beta readers um, to give feedback on my manuscript. So a beta read of just real quickly is just uh, a group of, of, you know, maybe four or five individuals that read a manuscript ahead of time. It's not, it's not to edit it per se, but just to read it and then give any uh, positive feedback or constructive criticism about what, what, uh, what I could change in, a, in my manuscript to uh, make it even better. Is that, is that pretty much right in a nutshell, Laverta, my publishing buddy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that, but if you would like uh, to be a beta reader for that, um, once the manuscript is ready, please let me know. All right, any questions, comments, or anything on that? Did we say every inch counts? Every inch, man. Since right. you're inching. <laughs> and, and we're inching forward. <laughs> yeah. Let's say hello to Corinne. Hi, Corinne. Oh, hello. Hey, Corinne. Hello. Hi, Corinne. Hello. hello. Yeah, and I'm letting. Um, Cole in and we'll say hi to her as soon as her as her uh, audio is ready. Hi Nicole, just want to make sure you can hear us and we can hear you. Hi, yes, I can hear you. Hey ladies. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> hey new ladies. Someone's asking for your name. I'll let you introduce yourself. Oh. Shaquana, Shaquana. Dante, from Georgia. Okay, Shaquana. Hi, Shaquana. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Yes. Hi, Shaleen. Hi. Good night, everyone. Hey, Hi. All Hi, right. Hi, <laughs> Okay. Um, just, I just love the fellowship here. Um, boy, we had some some really wonderful fellowship last week we always do every week from my perspective and i'm sure everyone agrees but um that sometimes that second hour it's not recorded I, I i sometimes i wish it was just so you know we could so people will be as blessed as, as we are those of us that are able to participate but we're not going to record the second hour um but I, you know it's it's just really a rich time if you're able to i know for those of you on the east coast that's a little too late in the evening but praise the lord all right ladies so hard hats and soft hearts that's our ongoing series wisdom for building or renovating your marriage and that's based on um proverbs 14 1 which says who has it memorized Proverbs 14.1. That's okay if you don't, because I never asked you to, but hey, <laughs> <laughs> I better have it memorized, right? Uh, but Pro Proverbs 14.1, it says, um, a wise wife builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with her hands. And so that's where you get the, you know, that construction kind of theme, um, building construction. That's where you get the hard hearts, but excuse me. Ooh, no, 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 not hard hearts. Hard hats. <laughs> hard hats and soft hearts, wisdom for building and renovating your marriage. So that's the overall um, series that we've been on for several weeks. Um, uh, last week, we finished on the topic of hanging up your boxing gloves. 
And it was basically uh, about avoiding or not stirring up strife um, or contention in your marriage. And we looked at also um, specifically last week, we looked at what Proverbs 10, 12 and 17, 9 mean when they, when those verses and other verses too, but when they talk about love covering sins or offenses. And so we, we did talk about that extensively, hanging up your boxing gloves. And um, I think, you know, it helps me. I mean, the word of God is a double-edged sword, right? It cuts both ways. It's like to, to um, all of us, again, turning our eyeballs inward and and um, and that, so I thought I, I gained a lot just by preparing that lesson, that series of lessons and and um, and, and sharing it with you. So I hope uh, you guys have been encouraged. So if um, you were not if you missed uh, Wednesday nights um, with us, you know, during the live Zoom call, that's fine. But I do encourage you to watch those those recordings in on the F, uh, the Facebook page, Wisdom's Table Facebook page um, or on the YouTube channel. Okay, before we get into tonight's lesson, we have husband homework. Who did last week's husband homework? D'Angela. Hi, D'Angela. <laughs> okay, so let me let me tell say what the homework was. So last week is homework number eleven. It was um, to ask for your ask your husband for his opinion or advice. It could be on anything, big or small. Um, and it was basically the purpose of that is to show, just one way to show your husband that you are genuinely interested and value his opinion about things. It's, um, it just is just a way to, you know, let him, let him know, hey, you know, my wife needs me. She wants my input on things um, and her decision-making and then also uh, part of that homework is even if you disagree, there's a way to disagree and there's a way to express how you disagree without criticizing him or, you know, saying, oh, that was a stupid idea or something, you know, avoiding, avoiding being critical, even if you disagree with what his opinion or advice on the thing might be. So D'Angela, you want to share how, how that went? Uh, it went good. I, um, I have a business outside of my job, I sell jewelry, right? So I asked my husband um, about marketing, about marketing skill, about something I need to do to expand my business, to grow my business, whatever. Okay. He gave me good advice. He gave me a lot of good advice and it made sense. First, I was first I was going to, I was about to say, well, I think that's not how, I was going to say that's not going to work, but I didn't. <laughs> So I caught myself. I was like, okay, you know, I was just thinking I'm gonna try it and see. But it, but it was really good. It was really good advice. So I was happy about that. And um, he was happy. Me. Oh my goodness, my son is calling me FaceTime. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. So I was happy about that. And I guess I'm out. You know, he was probably excited that I asked him and everything. Good. He kept, yeah. He mm -hmm. kept what? Talking about it. Kept um, saying um, a little things about it, and this and this also, and then he had come back and think about something else, and he say, and this too, I think this will work as well. So it was like that. Great, mm -hmm. great, that's good. It's, it's we're looking for positive responses um, from our husband. Now, this homework, uh, it's worth repeating if you've heard this before. The homework is not to, it's not part of a formula to get your husband, husband to do what you want to do or behave or treat you the way that he wants to treat you. It's just a way of affirming your husband as his helpmate, as his support, as his cheerleader. Um, so that, that's why we want to uh, do these, these different homework, homework assignments um, every week. And, and then also we're, we, it's not like you do one of the homework and then you stop that and then do the, the next week's homework. It's like you build on it. You keep doing all the previous homework and just build it as a, as a practice, as a, a Christian, godly Christian wife and supporting your and loving your husband and showing him that you, that you love him. So, um, oh, you want to, Laverta? Uh, do you want to go ahead and, sh and sh briefly share what happened? Yes, I will share. <laughs> huh? 
so so i i want to ask a friend like how do you capture your dreams like after you have a dream how do you you know capture your dreams do you write it down do you record it like how does that work for you when you have a dream and you're you're now awake um and the person um began to tell me that god told them to tell me that before i ask for anyone else's opinion that i should see god first and i was like oh okay all right thanks and that was it <laughs> oh okay i don't mean to laugh that means we definitely want to you know god what god thinks about anything in our lives absolutely comes first even when even when it comes to our husbands okay so it's not like the person is wrong um but you know it's not, it wasn't wrong for you to ask her or him um you know it wasn't it wasn't you were not out of order to still ask the person what they do yeah i mean did the person ask you did you ask god first Nevada? or did they just assume that you did not no, that was their initial reaction. Like, did you ask God what to do when you have these dreams? Well, yes, I'm talking to God because I literally had the dream, but I also want to know what you do when you wake up from a dream. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Look, at, at the time of the conversation, that person said, God told me to tell you. When, when did that part happen for the person that was, you know, responding to you? Yeah. Did, did, yeah, it's like it was literally a few minutes later they just kind of got silent and then they're like I want to share something with you that God told me to tell you and I was like okay and then for oh. the rest of the time that we were together I was like okay I'm not even gonna have a conversation anymore like yeah I I well I know for sure that you would not none of us displeases God if we you know, ask somebody like a friend, a husband, whatever, for, hey, what's your opinion on this? Or I need some advice. Um, God's not put out, depending on what it is, he's not put out if you ask for advice first. But like you said, I mean, like you said, Laverta, you, you probably, you know, sought God about it the moment you woke up, if you had a particular dream in mind, right? You know, yes, you, absolutely. Yeah. So, you, you know, um, yes, we are to, as we learned previously in the series, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust God with all your heart, don't lean to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths or your path. Um, yeah, it, 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 I'm sorry. It seemed a little presumptuous. I wasn't there. Um, I don't know who the person is that you're talking about, so I'm not gossiping, okay? <laughs> Um, but just just for us to kind of learn from the bird is like she's learned, you know, um, yes, we should always acknowledge God in all of our ways. Um, but let's, you know, let's make sure, number one, let's not be intimidated by anybody that says the Lord told me to tell you. Because it's like, OK, does the Lord know how to get to me directly? You know, um, and if you didn't feel any conviction about it, like you know, I, had, I had already consulted God on this, then you know that that person in that moment probably wasn't necessarily speaking for God. I just find it interesting why they were bothered by you asking the question where they molded over for a few minutes before they said, God told me to tell you. Um, but Keep, keep on doing the homework, um, especially for, uh, not especially, but including the, the single women, you know, and I, I appreciate Laverta um, looking for ways to, you know, creative ways to apply the husband homework um, to people in her life, since she is a single woman, um, to apply it to her other relationships, because it certainly can, you know, with adjustments, it certainly can uh, be beneficial. So thanks for sharing. I'm sorry you had that uncomfortable experience with it but be encouraged okay anybody else 
um, have any, uh, did you do the homework or did you um, have any questions or comments? All right, so this week's homework is, uh, this week's husband homework is to apologize without the yeah buts. Um, so um, I'm looking at my notes, I wanna make sure, okay. Always apologize, first of all, genuinely, when you know that you have something to be sorry about. Um, so don't, don't just say sorry um, when it's not sincere or you really don't think you did anything wrong um, because that would be insincere. Uh, but when you know you've done something wrong, something that God wouldn't, that God would not be pleased with, be pleased about, and that's my, and hold on. Um, say you're sorry for the thing and don't give any excuses. You can give reasons, but not excuses. Okay. Um, I realize, you know, just say something like, I realize that was wrong. I'm sorry. I'll work on that. That's something you can say. Or um, I shouldn't let my bad day affect how I treat you. It's not your fault. Um, you know, I hope you'll accept Hello. my apology. Hi, Samaya. Hi. Okay. Hi, Samaya. Yeah. We're Hi. talking about the uh, husband homework for this, the new husband homework for this week, um, Maya. Okay. So it's apologize without the yeah, but. So when I say yeah, buts, I mean no yeah, but. So for example, I wouldn't have done that if you had have done what you did. That's one no, no. Um, or I know it was wrong, but I had an awful day, so you should cut me some slack. Or even. Laurel, I like you looking in my house. I'm sorry? I said, this is Saquana. I feel like you've been looking in my house. No, I've been looking in mine <laughs> here. <laughs> I've been looking in mine. And I have to, you know, I've gotten better. I've gotten better, but, you know, I still kind of <laughs> thank you for your transparency, uh, Saquana. Thank you for your transparency. Yeah, because I threw a whole temper tantrum two days in a row and have had to apologize afterwards. Like, yeah. Good. Without excuses, right? Uh, <laughs> without without excuses. Yeah. 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 Without excuses, we reason we talked about the reason and we dug deep, but I did have to like go take a walk. Like I went for a two mile walk and came okay. back, okay. and then we talked about it. I, Good. I had to. I threw a whole temper tantrum. Good and um, not good that you threw a temper tantrum, but that you're you know you talked about it, you apologized, um, and even if it was two days in a row. You know, it's just something that, okay, I, Lord, help me to work on that and get better. So um, don't say something like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, what are you going to, aren't you going to apologize yourself? Just, just apologize, be sincere, apologize. Um, don't make excuses. If he wants to know, hey, why did you do that? Or why did you say that? Or whatever it is. Um, you know, just say, go ahead and give the reasons, but not in a way of, you know, like, like belittle or diminishing the fact that you did something wrong or that you hurt his feelings or fresh or made him make whatever it is, whatever the offense was. Um, and now if it's, if it's in the midst of an argument or, you know, a disagreement where both of you have something to apologize for, this is not about pretending like he didn't do anything wrong. If he's done something wrong and he needs to apologize, don't tell, you're not his Holy Spirit, you're his wife. You're not his mother, you're his wife. So you, you pray, just apologize for what you have to apologize for without the, any expectation from him. But you in your mind, you know, if you, if you can't get away to pray, but you pray in your mind in that moment, Lord, show him, you know, soften his heart and show him where he needs to apologize. But don't say, don't pray that out loud. <laughs> okay, Just keep it in your, in your head. But you, you know, you can certainly um, expect from God to work on your husband and so that he will apologize without excuse, without yeah, buts um, himself, but just God is pleased when we just acknowledge our own wrong 
regardless of what the other person apologizes for or doesn't apologize for. Okay, any questions on the homework? All right, so tonight, a new sub-series, uh, I've entitled it, Love Shouldn't Hurt Like This. And it's, again, regarding uh, domestic violence and abuse. Um, this topic is uh, for single women just as much as for married women. Um, and this is obviously an important topic um, because, you know, there's, it's important for on different, on several different uh, levels. Of course, first and foremost is safety of a victim, a wife and, and uh, children, if children are in, in the household. Um, so um, that, that's one of the reasons why it's important. And one of the levels of it that's first and foremost um, it also needs to be dealt with because of the impact of domestic violence and abuse that it can have on the victim, on uh, children's, on uh, children in the household, um, and long long term impact. And um, and there and it's really uh, also important. Another level of this is, you know, frankly. The problem that there is in the in the professing Christian, or the I'm not going to say professing the Christian church where they have dropped the ball on helping victims deal with this. A lot of church, not all churches, not Christianity, you know, or, or, or church across the board, but too many churches have dropped the ball um, or actually did, you know, handled uh, domestic violence uh, situations within their, their congregations or families that go to, go to these church, some of these churches um, and they have uh, handled it unbiblically. And that just adds to uh, the, the degree of why we need to address this. It just adds to the problem. It adds to the pain and the hurt. Um, and so, um, you know, there's, I don't necessarily want to go into, you know, examples of churches, um, you know, but there have been some um, I, I won't name churches, I won't name pastors, but um, you know, it's not just in the Catholic church where there's abuse, um, you know, and, and, and then leaders in the, in the churches have just put a blind uh, eye to it or gave bad counsel or unfair counsel or handled it in you know, victim blaming, all of that. Um, that happens in the Protestant church way too much as well. Um, and it's not, it's not unique to any type of Protestant church, you know, no type, no uh, particular denomination. It's just wide, too widespread. Now in this series, um, we have, or in this, um, this overall series of hard hats and soft hearts, we have, um, you know, considered the fact that, or we've been dealing with usually, you know, the typical or the average marriage where domestic violence is not the case but it's just helping us deal with the day-to-day -day ups and downs, joys and hurts that just come with any marriage. Um, so, but I wanted, so even though domestic violence is not typical of a Christian marriage, still it happens way too, way too much. And um, the, the added abuse of it not being dealt with properly in our churches, um, you know, that that's also, prevalent or yes too prevalent so that's why we're dealing with this that's why we want to uh, just you know cover this and make sure um, that we're that we're um, addressing all that there can be all that there is to address even if it's not typical not um, characteristic of the typical or average marriage any questions on that any comments all right, so in this series, um, uh, Love Shouldn't Hurt Like This, uh, I just want to tell you what we're going to discuss. We'll cover what abuse is and what abuse is not. We'll cover different forms of abuse. We'll look at why God hates it. Um, we'll, we'll look at different scriptures about that. Now, it, you know, it, it's obvious that God would hate domestic violence or you know, any kind of abuse in families and households. That's obvious, but we want to um, just remind ourselves or really um, take in uh, God's word on this subject related to this 
um, because that will be helpful um, to us. And, and whether we are going through domestic violence or any kind of abuse, or we know somebody who is, it's just good uh, to reinforce um, why God condemns it. Then we'll cover red flags and warning signs for single women. What single women uh, should be looking at when they're dating and considering uh, marriage. Um, uh, related to that is uh, the role of narcissistic personality disorder. There's actually uh, a form of, of abuse called narcissistic abuse. So we'll look at that. Um, We'll also look at the role of sound mindedness. I've talked a lot in the past two years about uh, sound mindedness based on Titus 2 4. The older women are to teach the younger women to be sound minded, to be sober, to, be, to think rationally. And so that, um, that um, admonition still applies, or not still, it obviously applies and especially applies when we're talking about domestic violence and abuse. We'll look at also uh, submission in marriage and um, it, it, its implications in the context of, of domestic violence and abuse. Um, we'll look at when you're a victim, when you're the victim of abuse. And I'll write this down and if, um, Roberta, if, you're, if you can, could you type this in the chat? Um, the National Domestic Violence Hotline the phone number is 800-799-7233. And then also you can text um, the word START, all caps, S-T-A-R-T. -T, and you can uh, uh, text that, text START to this number, 88788. And uh, let me also say uh, about when you're the victim, get to safety, physically leave with the kids. Thank you, Liberta. Physically leave with the kids. Um, also, when it comes to the victim, we'll talk about uh, provoking, keeping in mind what we said in the, you know, um, put down your, or hang up your boxing gloves and don't, don't incite or provoke, um, uh, sorry, contention or strife. Now, some women do do that, um, but it, it's still wrong under any circumstances. The, the abuse is still wrong under any circumstances. It is not a woman's fault or the victim's fault that they get, uh, you know, get uh, abused. So even, even if a woman provokes, you know, and I've seen it, you know, you know, um, yeah, go ahead, hit me, hit me, you know, and then the guy uh, hits her. Now, he should not ever, ever do that. But at the same time, God doesn't want us to poke the bear. We want to be wise, not, not foolishly, you know, you know, pushing buttons. Um, I, and so I want to make that distinction. It's always wrong, no matter what for a, a man to hit a woman, a woman to hit a man, that happens too. Um, but, it's, it, but at the same time, we want to be, to remember to put 100% effort into doing the right thing, even if your husband's sin is 100 times worse than yours. Um, and there are scriptures for that. Proverbs 15, one and two, we won't look at that right now, but just write them down. Um, Proverbs 15, verses 1 and 2, James 1, 19 through 26, and 1 Peter 2, 23. Um, and so we'll, we'll also look at why do some women put up with it, that, that battered wife syndrome, we'll, we'll consider that. We'll consider forgiveness when you're the victim. Um, We'll also consider whether to die, excuse me, domestic violence is biblical grounds for divorce. We'll look at that. Um, and then we'll look at when you're the perpetrator. Women initiate violence. So some stats, I don't, you know, haven't verified any stats, but I saw some stats say that women initiate domestic violence. 
um, as much as men do. Um, sure, Samaya, the scriptures um, regarding not provoking is Proverbs 15, 1 and 2. James 1, 19 through 26. And 1 Peter 2, 23. And that, again, is when, when you're the victim. When you're the perpetrator, women initiate violence, um, at least as often as men do, but they are more likely to use a weapon. We all know about uh, Al Green and his grits, right? <laughs> um, but we are, we are, I'm sorry, Corinne? I thought, oh, no, I didn't say anything. I was just chuckling about the grits. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll say hi to Didi. Didi, are you? Can you hear us? Want to make sure you can hear and we can hear you. And she can still connecting. Hi, Didi. You're on mute. Just want to make sure we can hear you. Good evening. I'm here. <laughs> okay, there you are. Welcome, hi, sister. Thank you. Okay, um, and so. Uh, women are more likely to use a weapon and more likely to get hurt worse. So we'll, we'll go dig into that a little bit. And then lastly, we want to put it all together. Um, we'll deal with the impact of domestic violence um, on women. And um, we want to close it out with clinging to God through deliverance, repentance, recovery, um, because it's a long, hard road. Um, yeah, but first some ground rules before we uh, start with what abuse is and what it's not. Um, in, in terms of this Bible study setting, it's not possible to cover all of the different scenarios of domestic violence. Um, situations are different from one couple to the next. So I can only give, uh, you know, I can only make generalizations or, or give advice or counsel or whatever on um, based on generalizations um, without going digging into any particular um, situation or in instance. But some things are universally true. And those things are um, among those things is it is not a sin for a victim to take her children, get to safety. And, um, and, and not be pressured or intimidated to return until it is safe to do so, if it ever would be safe to do so. Uh, there are, um, there's just too much bad teaching out there and bad counsel out there. So, you know, you go to, where it's suggested you go to a, a marriage, Christian marriage counseling, one or two sessions and the husband apologizes um, and, you know, he seems like, you know, he's truly repented in front of other people, but when you get back and get home, he, he gets right back to it. And there, there is uh, at least one instance that's well known in, in Christian circles um, where a wife went to the church to, to, you know, seek help regarding her husband's uh, abuse of her, his abuse of her and his uh, abuse of the children. And um, after some time of counseling, whatever, and counseling the husband and him apologizing, he'll never do it again to the counselor, Christian counselors. Um, she, the wife had left and took the kids with her. Um, but then they told her, you need to go back home. She refused because it was not safe. And long story short, the pastor excommunicated her from the church because she would not follow their counsel. She ended up getting a restraining order during that time as well, um, because it just did not get better and it may have even gotten worse. And, um, and she was trying to say, hey, you know, she, they said she was wrong for calling the police, wrong for getting a restraining order against her husband. She just needed to, you know, be like Christ and, and suffer through and, you know, not, not cause him or provoke him to, you know, be be abusive, um, all of these things. And they, they tended to believe the husband and there was no support for the wife. So they excommunicated her. At, shortly after that, he, the husband was um, arrested and convicted for child abuse. And I think he's still in jail. Um, no apology that I'm aware of to the wife and to, the, to her family. And, you know, it's just a devastating 
um, situation. So don't let anyone uh, pressure or intimidate you to return to an unsafe situation in your home. Another general, um, general principle is that it is all, I'm gonna say it again, and I may have to say this several times through, the, through this series, but it is always wrong to physically attack anybody, but especially a, a spouse. Wives are not to blame for their abusive husband's uh, grievous sin. Even, even as I say, you know, don't provoke, it is not to imply that you deserve to be hit or abused if you do provoke. Rather, it's to teach you and me to be wise, like don't poke the bear. It's worth repeating that. Um, an exception might be, you know, like in the case of self-defense. Um, so there's resisting domestic violence, but don't take revenge. It is not uh, right for a victim to take revenge on her husband. Um, another principle, you cannot fix your abusive husband. Um, that's something, that's a work that he has to do with God uh, and don't have a savior complex. A lot of women feel like, oh, you know, and they keep going back the battered wife syndrome or, you know, some other reason they keep going back and they feel, oh, I just, if I just do this more, if I just do that more, if I stop doing that, um, or I can fix him, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll change him. Um, that is delusion because um, it, is, it is not, we can't control ourselves. Sometimes we need help with try to control our husbands by, you know, oh, thank you, we can fix them. The best thing and the only thing that we can do for our husbands is pray you know, that for our abusive husbands is to pray for them, but we do not need to be in their presence. If it's not safe, don't be in his prayer. You don't need to be with him to be praying for him. Uh, healing and recovery will take a long time, but it is possible. With God's help, it is possible. I also want to say another ground rule, the last one I want to give is that uh, Sister Laurel Davis, that's me, I am not a family therapist. I'm not a professional counselor regarding domestic violence or, or anything. I'm just a lay sister like the rest of you whom, you know, God has just called me to teach women. He's given me, you know, a gift to halfway understand, you know, reading comprehension when I read the Bible. Um, and I'm just imparting to you what I feel God is calling me to impart to you about um, this topic or any topic that I share at wisdom's table. So I'm not a professional counselor. I'm not, you know, um, I, I'm just want to present these studies for you to take them as your, you know, or don't take them. What I mean to say is don't take these studies as, you know, your sole source of information about domestic violence or, um, you know, how, how you, if you're in that situation or you know somebody that's in that situation, how to deal with it. Um, take notes study the various scriptures that, that will be provided throughout this series on domestic violence, um, seek the support and biblical guidance of your pastor or other leaders, other godly church leaders, um, or, or seek certified Christian counseling, uh, professional therapy, um, whatever you need, law enforcement, if, that's, if the situation calls for that. Okay, I just want to make it clear that you know, don't look to me as a, you know, I'm just a lay person, but I'm just, I, the, any of this information that I've given you, I researched, I researched it and you can do the same thing. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Any concerns, any thoughts? Okay. So what domestic violence and abuse are and what they're not. So domestic violence and abuse, these two terms are similar, but they're not exactly the same. Um, not all abuse is violent in, this, in the physical sense. Um, that is, you know, abuse does not always involve criminal behavior worthy of arrest, conviction, and jail time, even though it can be very painful and have long-term detrimental effects. So, um, so domestic violence 
is defined very narrowly um, to, to mean uh, physical injury or, or the threat of physical in injury. And so it's a very narrow specific meaning. Um, and so this definition I got from gotquestions.org, gotquestions.org, um, it's a great resource, um, biblically sound for the most part um, on almost any topic uh, that related to Christianity, other faiths, uh, the occult, et cetera. So, and gotquestions.org, they define domestic violence as an act or threatened act of violence upon someone with whom the perpetrator is or has previously been in an intimate relationship. Now, and then abuse, the verb form of abuse, to, to abuse. And that means, um, there's three or four different meanings here, um, all related, of course. It means to treat in a harmful, injurious, or offensive way. To speak insultingly, harshly, and unjustly to or about someone. To revile or malign someone. Uh, to commit sexual assault upon someone. All right, so that's, that's abuse. Some synonyms for abuse are injure, harm, hurt, damage, berate, slander. Uh, abuse, um, like domestic violence, is often intentional with the purpose of hurting the other person, harming them, injuring them um, in some kind of way. Um, the, the victim of abuse, uh, domestic violence, is usually defenseless. So women, so I mentioned earlier, just a moment ago that women may initiate, if there's gonna be domestic violence in the home that women initiate as, about as often as men do, but women usually use a weapon and women are usually hurt far worse. Um, and it's because, you know, we are defenseless. And so we'll look at scripture um, related to that in a moment. In terms of domestic violence and abuse, Usually, this is key, usually there's a pattern of behavior, a cycle of violence that repeats itself. So, um, and that cycle um, from what my research uh, showed me is, first there's tension, then there's an incident, tension that builds up to an incident. Uh, after the incident, there's reconciliation, and then, a period of calm. So tension, incident, reconciliation, and calm. That's the general pattern or cycle of violence that happens in a home that where domestic violence characterizes, is a big part of characterizing that particular marriage relationship. So I'm gonna read something from the Got Questions article that I read. So um, tension builds, they're describing the, this cycle of violence. Tension builds, the victim attempts to keep the abuser mollified, and that, that just means I had to look up mollified, so I'm sharing the definition of that. It means, a, you know, basically to appease, to re, in order to reduce the severity of anger or anxiety, to pacify or placate. So uh, again, tension builds, the victim attempts to keep the abuser mollified, but eventually an incident of abuse occurs. The abuser apologizes and attempts to make it up to the victim, perhaps by promising it will never happen again or by lavishing the victim with gifts. Then comes a period of calm before the tension begins to build again. The stages of the cycle may take only minutes or may uh, develop over years. Without intervention, the periods of makeup or calm often disappear. So that gives, you, give us, gives us an idea of what abuse is. What abuse is not. Um, abuse is not when it's uh, exaggeration. A lot of women, I've seen it. I know of at least three different incidences of women, of wives that exaggerated, built up this, you know, these, these, this accusation against their husband, um, 
you know, they, they may have, like if she initiated uh, the violence and you know, they got into an argument and she threw the phone at him or something or grabbed, you know, a frying pan or whatever to try to hit him. And then he grabs her more to stop her, you know, protect himself from getting hit. Um, but maybe she's coming at such force that he grabs, you know, when he grabs her, you know, he, he may leave marks on her arms. I have seen that at least in two different instances where that very thing happened, separate inc incidences, uh, separate uh, couples, I should say. And, um, and the wife used that, the Bruce, oh, look what he did to me. He abused me. Not mentioning the fact that he was just, he wasn't grabbing her for any other reason than to stop her from hurting him with a weapon. That's an exaggeration. Um, now, if he had done more than that, you know, um, yeah, I mean, but a man's no, no, God would not want a husband to stand there and just take, you know, a frying pan upside the head or a phone being thrown across the room. Uh, God would, a, a husband that, that um, tries to stop his wife, he's, he's going, we can't expect him to just take it. Um, so exaggeration is um, a, a so-called victim that's, that's exaggerating an incident. That is not abuse. Um, it can turn into it, but, it's, but in and of itself, you know, exaggeration uh, does not qualify. Also, domestic violence and abuse, there can be, there can be one-offs, but um, there's one-offs, one-off incidences versus a pattern or a cycle. Um, so yes, e you know, even if the husband slaps a wife, um, that is that is in the very um, general sense, okay, that's violent, that's domestic violence in the very general sense, but in how we um, just define it, it's not, um, it doesn't qualify to, it's not in the same category as where there's a pattern, that cycle of violence, you know, that happens uh, over and over and over again. Um, a a one-off shouldn't, you know, a husband or a wife, neither one of them should ever hit the other, ever, uh, uh, you know, it, it demonstrate violence against each other. But we can't say, okay, that he's a he's an abuser or she's an abuser if it just happened once you know, after 10 years of marriage and they just, you know, got so upset and just, he slaps her or she slaps him or something. Um, but, and then, but there's immediate remorse, immediate, um, you know, I'm so sorry, I never do that again, but then they don't do it again. There's immediate repentance. Um, and then there's, you know, there's um, reconciliation that lasts. There's not that, that cycle of violence. Um, Abuse is not the extreme need to control. Not always um, a person is, some people are just control freaks. And, um, you know, some, some people, the, that pattern of violence with people that want to control, there's that pattern. But sometimes it's just a person can really feel like they need to control, but it's not always with the intent to do harm. A perpetrator of domestic violence, a perpetrator of any kind of abuse wants to do the person, the victim harm, physical and otherwise. Uh, but if some, somebody that's, that is controlling doesn't, that's not abuse, even if you don't like it, it's not, it's not automatically abuse. Um, and then lack of self-control, same kind of thing. It, the intent to do harm has to be a consideration in how we categorize um, where you know a wife is offended by a husband's um, behavior or, or you know he's so controlling or or he doesn't have enough control um, to, to like he doesn't deal with his anger very well um, and sometimes you know it's it may um, it may come out in a in a violent way. But if it does not have that pattern, it's like, yeah, keep an eye on it. If he needs to get help, get him help or help him help him get help or whatever. But um, the intent to do harm 
against the victim is, is a consideration. Uh, I'm at, we're at the a minute after the top of the hour. And um, well, I'll start next week with different forms of abuse. Um, I'll, I'll do that next week. Uh, but if you need to drop off, thank you so much. I hope that you know this is a good start for, for us on this topic. I'm here for up to another hour right now. If you have any questions or comments, um, I will stop recording once we, uh, we do that, if anybody wants to stay on. Any questions in the meantime, before anybody drops off? No? No, no questions. Okay. Great. Um, so. Good night, ladies. Good, good night, everyone. <laughs> good night. Good night. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions that they want to stay on? Stay on. Stay on. Want to stop recording?